I'm Traver with you, and our special guest this week is OSU football coach Mike Gundy. Thank Appreciate you, you coming out. Good to be here. Tell you, Michael, it's been an interesting year for you so far now, huh? I mean, you've had some serious lows and you've had some highs here lately. But here's a question I want to ask you right off the bat. When you got onto the plane after the Troy game and you were flying home, did you still seriously have confidence that this team could meet the goals that you started with at the beginning of the year? We did because uh, we knew that we turned the ball over five times uh, and we hadn't had Dan Terrell Savage healthy yet. Uh, we put Kendall in, let him run the ball some, and did a nice job, but he was still young, and he didn't have enough endurance to go throughout the game. So we knew when we got Dantrell back, and if we just took care of the football, and as our defense matured, that we'd continue to get better. But uh, the only thing you do is go back and go to work. You know, you hear me say that all the time. You go to work early and get the players out there and continue to work hard. College football has uh, become a roller coaster. Uh, and I think it's going to be that way from now on with all the parity out there. You had a lot of teams losing that you wouldn't think are going to lose. Let, let's go to the quarterback situation. You have Bobby Reed, who I know you still believe is a really good kid and a really good player. And then you just decide that Robinson is the answer. And he has looked really, really good. How, how is that whole thing, being a quarterback like you were, how does that whole thing been working out with the three of you guys? Well, they're both really good people. And uh, Zach does a great job and Bobby's continued to work hard. Uh, he went through a tough week last week, almost like it finally set in uh, that he was a backup. And, you know, the one thing as coaches we have responsibility is to put the players on the field that give us the best chance to win to the team. And uh, Zach had played better when he filled in for Bobby. So uh, that's why we played him. And as he's matured, he's played pretty well. But we, we need Bobby Reed, as was evident at the A&M game. You know, there's going to be a time when he's going to have to come in and play. And he's continued to work hard, and he has a great attitude. And he's still a good football player. Right. Uh, we just, you know, are using the other guy right now. Real quick, one more thing, Steelman. Do you believe that Bobby Reed, when you start spring football, will be at Oklahoma State? I think he will. Well, he graduates in December, uh, and he'll have a decision to make uh, with, with what he wants to do from this point on. But if he wants to be there, we want him there because uh, he's meant so much to us, and he's continued to get better. But uh, I'm sure that he'll have to think things through for his future. It's such a unique situation. Let's talk a bit about some of the gut check victories you've had uh, at home against Texas Tech and Kansas State. Huge in both of those games, Brandon Pettigrew with big plays for you. Now, Oklahoma State's had some really good tight ends in the past, Alonzo Mays, Marcellus Rivers, and others. But how good is this guy? He looks like he can play on Sundays. He's big time. Yeah, I'm afraid he's, uh, he's getting to be too good. Uh, <laughs> he, he's really a good player. And I've said this uh, to the press. You've heard me that the thing I like about Brandon is he loves to play football. Uh, it's so enjoyable to be around players that just like to play the game the way we used to a long time ago. Uh, and I talked to the team about this. How many of you guys would play if you weren't on scholarship, if you just wanted to go play the game? Well, he would be one of those guys. He's very competitive. Uh, he loves the challenge. Uh, you know, he's 6'6", 250, and uh, he's only a 4'8", 4'9", guy, but he very seldom gets caught out there on Saturdays. He's got great competitive speed, and he's very tough, good feet, and he's a good blocker. Let's talk a little bit. Trey mentioned Zach Robinson, and obviously he's come in and done a nice job for you at quarterback. Um, you know, there was a guy named Gundy who came in for Ronnie Williams and showed calm under pressure and a guy who could read defenses and make the right reads. Now, Zach could run the ball better right. than you could, but do you see a little bit of yourself in terms of the analytical quarterback out there in Zach Robinson? Well, Zach's a better athlete. Uh, you know, he, I, I've negative 246 yards in my career rushing. <laughs> and I still got the record, and, uh, and Zach's had a couple games, I think, where he's rushed for over 100 yards. And yeah. He gives us the extra dimension where you have to defend the option. Uh, we get a little concerned at times that he takes several hits. Uh, if you plan for him to run the option maybe eight or ten times a game, he's still going to get five or six carries on the scrambles. So, uh, but we are happy with his progress. You know, he's into, what, seven or eight games now in his career, uh, and he continues to get better. Uh, but he's shown that he's, he can be durable. Uh, he understands defenses, and, and he's calm. And uh, the last game, Kansas State, was really a big game for him uh, because it was the first time that he – stepped in in the end and took the team down to win. Now, you know, against Tech, it was just a track meet. Uh, but against Kansas State, he really did a nice job of leading the offense at the end of the game. You know, without beating Bobby Reed down at all, but it seems to me watching, of course, I'm not down there, but it seems to me that Zach Robinson does a better job of making
in that split second decision on whether he should run or pass and do that sometimes Bobby kind of got in between and he didn't know which way he wanted to go am I wrong on that no Bobby gets caught at times uh, and then there's some games where he'll take off and he'll do really well and in other games uh, he got a little hesitant uh, but Zach does some things that you really can't coach uh, what you're talking about savvy yeah. and uh, he he makes plays and takes off and there's times he's not supposed to and he gets a first down so you don't say anything about it you know there's players that do that and he's shown signs of being able to uh, to make plays and turn something bad into something good what about this Texas team coming up I mean I on paper they're not as good I think as they probably have been the last couple of years I know you've already watched film of them uh, Nebraska gave them everything they wanted on their home mm -hmm. field Oklahoma State has not beaten Texas in 10 years and had some horrible comebacks against them. Mm -hmm. well, is, this, is this maybe the biggest game you've been a head coach of? Well, they're all big. You, you, yeah, you guys know. know in our profession, I say that every week. Uh, <laughs> every game we play is big now, but uh, this will be a big game for us. Uh, you know, from what I understand, ABC's picking it up and putting it at 2.30, and so our players will be excited about that. And we have a lot of guys on our team from Texas, so they enjoy playing in this game. Uh, Texas is still fast and still can run I mean uh, still big and physical up front you know they're 325 at the three technique and number 97 for him they list him at 320 but he he may be 340 okay oh, oh, yeah he, he's really big and yeah. 44 their linebacker in there he's really good player so they have good players and then Colt obviously has made some plays now I I didn't see all the game yesterday I guess he went out of the game he have um, been getting hit a lot yeah I didn't know what happened from that point on and then obviously 25 is a good runner so uh, it'll be a great game uh, we'll really need to play well in the special teams uh, we, we feel like that, that uh, that's helped us against Kansas State, and uh, we want to play well in special teams to try to uh, give us the extra edge against Texas. Yeah, Jamal Charles had 215 yards in the fourth quarter against Nebraska yesterday, 290 for the game, breaking Billy Sims' all-time uh, rushing record against Nebraska. Now, Mike, I know you said you don't want to talk about the post-game situation anymore, but I do want to ask you from this standpoint, because you've got three young Gundys running around back in the green room <laughs> back there, three cute little kids. And my eight-year-old stepson is running around saying that's garbage, and the person who put it mm -hmm. in there is garbage, <laughs> and stuff like that. I'm sure. Does, yeah. Do the audience? Do you have some kids? You know, sure. doing the impressions and that kind of thing. Now, oh, I want to know. Your wife gave you a little bit of hard time about that, mm -hmm. and I want to know: Are you having? To, are the Gundy kids doing any impressions or anything like that? How's that been? Well, you know, it's funny. My uh, my middle one, Gunner, he still will ask at times if something comes up around the ha the house. He'll say, "Does that have something to do with that lady that wrote that article?" <laughs> I said, Gunner, that's, that's over with. It's been five weeks. And, and uh, you know, but he'll see my face and he'll think that I'm mad at the uh -oh. lady that wrote the article. Uh, but I, it's, uh, I've never seen anything uh, explode like that has. It's you ever amazing. expected to be a YouTube star? No. Ever? You know, and I've never been on YouTube still to this day. Really? I, I've never gone on YouTube. Well, you got to go to YouTube. You can watch me ch chase that Japanese pitcher all the way. <laughs> Seen that. You have seen. Oh, he yeah. says he's seen that. I've though. seen that on. Uh, Everybody's seen that. I've seen that on the on the ESPN deal. Yeah. And uh, that that's a classic. It's now all the way to center field fence. <laughs> uh, that's actually worse than what I did. I would. You're right. I, I would have much rather yell, "I'm a man. I'm 40," than chase that dude all over the place. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That, that was a great one. Now, did you ever catch him? I did get him. I got some blows in on that's him too. Good. Yeah. But then the, the 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 manager stepped on my head, and I had to get a cat scan. It was ugly. Yeah. Uh, Japanese baseball at best. Well, Mike, listen, we appreciate you coming you down from Stillwater. And, uh, you know, if, if, if you win three games in a row, you'll be playing in Norman for the Big 12 Championship, the South. Is that wild or what? Well, we just want to win the next one. And, uh, I know. We, we, I have, know. we, we want to win the next one. You, you know Coach talked. Well, the next but, uh, one would be huge. I yeah, know. Yeah. It would be huge. Yeah, it, This will be a great game. And our players are excited about playing. Our coaches feel good about it. And uh, our team thinks they can win the football game. Yeah. So uh, it'll be exciting. We need to put forth our best effort and go out there and, and let it all hang out and have some fun. Good. Mike Gundy, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up. Thank, Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. We'll be right back. Questions from the audience and email. Stay with us. The locker room would like to thank Mr. Robert.